Water is as important to life as food. Civilizations have grown where water was plentiful and have fled when drought became a reality. Today in the United States, as in many other countries, water treatment and distribution are governed by regulations and standards based upon experience and research. Yet each home, each office building, almost every structure created by man is individual and different from every other. Each has its own maze of pipes and conduits to carry clean, fresh water in and used contaminated water away. And with this individuality and the ensuing complexity of each water system, man's oldest enemy, human error, is introduced. Plumbing codes in the United States prohibit connections which would allow contaminants to flow into our water distribution systems. We know these connections as cross connections, places within a system where back pressure or back siphonage could introduce contaminants into an otherwise safe distribution network. A cross connection exists where there is a physical connection or arrangement between two otherwise separate piping systems, one of which contains potable or drinking water and the other, waters or fluids of unknown or questionable safety, which allows flow from the non-potable system to the potable system. In many cases, these connections are obvious. The end of a hose placed in a vat of a metal salt to prepare a plating bath, or in a recreational vehicle sanitary waste tank to flush it out. We either are unaware that the contaminants can be siphoned into the water system, or we are willing to gamble that the water supply pressure will be fairly constant while we work. Contamination by cross-connection does happen, and in some cases has gone undetected until large numbers of people became ill. In 1969, a cross-connection caused the Holy Cross College football team to cancel almost every game of its scheduled season. At the Holy Cross practice field, a water line serving a series of sunken sprinkler boxes used for irrigation was extended to a faucet where the team obtained its drinking water. In profile, we can see that the line across the field past the drain pits could act as a siphon. A number of children played on the field and used the irrigation boxes as toilets. Four of the children had infectious hepatitis. Early one morning, there was a fire in nearby Worcester. Fire department pumpers at the scene reduced the pressure in the practice field water line below atmospheric. Subsequent tests using dyed water in the irrigation boxes and open fire hydrants below the field showed that contaminated water could have traveled from the boxes to the drinking fountain. This incident was responsible for the illness of about 90 persons. Another case caused more embarrassment than illness. During the 1974 conference of the American Water Works Association, a cross-connection between the air conditioning system and the drinking water system resulted in chromate contaminated water being served at a luncheon. The color alerted the diners and no one became ill. Numerous other incidents could be cited. Let's examine the concept of cross-connections more closely. Potential danger exists when we have one system which contains potable water and a second system which contains any non-potable substance. A cross-connection is formed whenever it becomes possible for the non-potable fluid to flow into the potable system. An ordinary valve such as a gate, solenoid, or single check valve is not adequate separation between potable and non-potable systems. Failure to seat properly or accidental movement of some part such as the gate could allow water to flow from the non-potable to the potable system. If the pressure in the non-potable system is above that of the potable system, this situation is called back pressure. On the other hand, pressure in the non-potable system may remain at atmospheric or above, while pressure in the potable system drops below atmospheric, causing a vacuum which siphons the contaminant into the potable supply. This action is called back siphonage. Back siphonage is what happened at Holy Cross. After pressure was restored, the virus-laden water was carried to the fountain 
where it was ingested by the team. Let's look at another cross connection. An ordinary sink is filled with potable water. If the water should become contaminated with any non-potable substance, and the cross connection completed by attaching a hose, then any situation which would reduce line pressure below atmospheric would give rise to back siphoning. These two examples, the Holy Cross incident and the back siphonage at a sink, illustrate two areas of concern in providing backflow protection. The first concern is that potable water in the mains should be protected from contamination by any user because the number of people affected could be very large and the consequences very grave. The water supplier should require that customers take appropriate measures to prevent contamination of the system. The other concern is that the drinking water within a facility is as safe as the water provided by the supplier, that it has not become contaminated by backflow from industrial uses. There are four classes of devices which protect against backflow. The air gap, the RP, or reduced pressure principle device, the double check valve, and the vacuum breaker, both pressure and atmospheric types. The air gap is the most efficient and dependable method for preventing backflow. At a high hazard location, such as at a sanitary sewage treatment plant, an air gapped water supply is essential. To assure an adequate air gap, certain standards have been established. A gap of twice the diameter of the supply line can be used in many cases. But if the line is close to a fixture wall, then a gap of three pipe diameters is necessary. By close, we mean less than three diameters from a sidewall. In a closed fixture, such as a tank, all of these air gaps must be increased by 50%. This table summarizes air gap specifications. Though relatively foolproof, air gaps should be inspected regularly, about once a year. A second method of preventing cross connections is the so-called RP device, or Reduced Pressure Principle Backflow Preventer. These devices are manufactured in sizes ranging from 3 quarters of an inch to 10 inches. Where waterline shutdown would be a severe handicap to users, Reduced Pressure Principle Backflow Preventers should be installed in parallel, which will permit servicing them with a minimum of inconvenience. The unit should be located so that it will not be subject to freezing or flooding. A properly installed RP device must have valves on both ends of the unit, and there must be an adequate air gap at the relief port. Test cocks should be unobstructed, and the device should be readily accessible for testing and repairs. During overhaul of a device, the inner surfaces should be examined closely to attempt to determine whether backflow has occurred since the last overhaul. Evidence of backflow is justification for immediate review of the system to ensure the adequacy of the protective measures installed. A cross section of the RP device shows how it works. There are two check valves at the top of the unit and a pressure relief valve at the bottom. Any backflow will normally close the second valve, but if the valve fails to seat properly, the pressure on a diaphragm near the bottom of the unit opens the relief valve. The first valve will remain closed. Intensive studies at Erda's Oak Ridge National Laboratory has shown that these devices are extremely reliable. However, the RP device must be tested at least once a year to be certain that it is functioning properly. Repairs and testing should be done by a certified tester. This is two board on gauge Certification was introduced by the Foundation for Cross-Connection Control and Hydraulic Research at the University of Southern California to ensure that only qualified personnel test and repair these devices. Local and state health departments may also sponsor courses leading to certification. To test a properly installed RP unit takes between five and 10 minutes. Deficiencies should be noted in writing to the proper authorities and should be corrected immediately. Another type of cross-connection control device available for prevention of backflow due to either back pressure or back siphonage 
is the double check valve. These may be used only in low hazard situations. Standards for double check valves prepared by the American Water Works Association should be consulted if they are considered for use. Now let's take a look at a fourth method to prevent back siphonage. Vacuum breakers. These are more limited in their applicability since they do not prevent backflow due to back pressure. There are two types of vacuum breakers, the pressure or spring-loaded type and the atmospheric type. The pressure type vacuum breaker uses a spring-loaded check valve. If the water pressure within the device drops below one pound per square inch above atmospheric, the spring opens the air inlet, venting the downstream leg and closes the valve. The pressure type vacuum breaker may be used where there is a shutoff valve downstream, providing its critical level is at least 12 inches above the highest point of water usage. The atmospheric vacuum breaker is somewhat simpler than the pressure device as it uses no springs or other mechanical assistance. If the supply pressure drops below atmospheric, the airport admits air into the downstream leg and the valve is kept closed by atmospheric pressure. The atmospheric type vacuum breaker may not be used if there is a valve or other obstruction downstream and must be installed in a vertical position six inches or more above the highest use point. It is smaller and less expensive than the pressure type and lends itself well to use on hose bibs, janitor sinks, laboratory sinks, and so forth. There are obviously a number of devices designed to eliminate the dangers of water contamination through cross connections. Some are best employed because of their reliability and the seriousness of a particular contamination threat. Others are best suited because of the low risk situation. Whatever the case, decisions to use a particular device should be based on an evaluation of the specific problem. Guides can be found in many publications and in plumbing codes written for this express purpose. Consult them. Once a device has been installed, it must be inspected and tested regularly and repaired as needed. Records of test and repair must be maintained and forwarded to proper authorities upon request. Systems which bypass a backflow prevention device must never be installed. The Safe Drinking Water Act became law in December 1974. A report accompanying that act noted that the majority of water system operations were not protected by a cross-connection control program. An effective state or local ordinance is highly recommended for establishing a cross-connection control program. For assistance regarding cross-connection systems or programs, contact your local or state health department, the Environmental Protection Agency, the American Water Works Association, or the Foundation for Cross-Connection Control and Hydraulic Research at the University of Southern California. Pure water is essential to life. The pipes that carry our water are usually out of sight. We trust that they will do their job. Protection from the hazards that can exist in their intricate pathways are important to us all.